Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with David Dreisinger from Search Minerals. How are you today, David? I'm just fine, thank you, Tracy. David, you know, I was reading a little bit about you, and part of the reason we're, we're talking to David out there is because he is considered one of the top rare earth experts in the world, which of course I know he doesn't want to talk about. So you have done, what you said, 21 patents so far? Yeah, 21 U.S. patents in different areas, including the Search Minerals patent. Well, obviously that's what we want to talk about here, David. So talk to us a little bit about the Search Minerals patent. What we figured out, Tracy, is that with our Foxtrot deposit in uh, Labrador, that we've got uh, a, t a type of mineral, alanite and fergusonite uh, minerals that carry our rare earths, which are quite reactive with acid. So we figured out a way to directly extract our rare earths from our mineral without having to go through all the usual steps of grinding, flotation, gravity, and magnetic separation. So we directly treat the mineral, recover the rare earths into solution, and come out with a rare earth product that goes off to the refinery. So David, I'm trying to understand that completely, and obviously um, I don't. So if you could try and dumb this down for me and maybe some of the other Investor Intel audience members that don't fully understand this patent, but can you tell me, obviously this is a competitive advantage for search minerals. Yes, It's, it's a huge advantage for us because we have the ability to scale to the, the right size to meet the market. We're planning on a thousand tons a day ore treatment. We don't have to build a huge mineral processing facility. We can just directly treat the ore, go through to this mixed rare earth oxide. We're on Tidewater in, in Labrador, got good infrastructure around us, we've got a low capital cost, a reasonable operating, operating cost, so we're well positioned to hit the rare earth market as it uh, uh, matures and grows in the years ahead. Of course, for everyone out there in Investor Intel that may not be familiar with Search Minerals, this is a company that anyone interested in sustainability is going to love, that they're one of less than a handful of sources that have actual rare earths in North America. Can you explain to us a little bit more about Search Minerals and why, why you joined their team out of all the teams on the planet that you could have joined, David, because you are considered one of the top experts? Search Minerals has a, a huge land position in Labrador with a 70-kilometer belt full of rare earth deposits. Our first uh, one is the Foxtrot deposit. We've got uh, Deepwater Fox and Fox Meadows coming along behind. So we've got a massive inventory of rare earth occurrences across a large belt. Uh, very interesting grades. Uh, all the magnet materials are sitting there. So this was a company that uh, has a, a very large portfolio of exploration assets that need metallurgical support to develop. So I've stepped into the role of metallurgical uh, engineer to understand how to get those rare earths out and into the marketplace. Okay, but someone with your intellectual depth and experience, is this a metallurgical challenge or, or is this something that's so intriguing you just had to do it? David, I, I'd, I'd like to know why we as investors, you know, we're following you, David. Why did you join Search Minerals? Search Minerals deposits are many and varied across the 70 kilometer belt. There's uh, metallurgical solutions required to get those rare earths out of those deposits into the marketplace. So the challenge for me was to figure out a method that was economical, scalable, and effective at recovering the rare earths into a final form that could be sent off to a refinery. So you obviously have this formula, and you have something here for me today. Can you I, show me what I this do. is? I do. I have some samples. We just run a, a pilot plant at SGS Lakefield, a $1.75 million pilot plant, which has taken us from ore through to the mixed rare earth oxide, which goes off to the refinery. So I brought a few show and tell samples if you'd like me to show them today. Absolutely. Uh, we've got our crushed ore. So we don't grind. We just crush to a, a kind of a sandy size. Here, we I'll hold this. Okay. We treat that with acid. In right, order this to, is the ore? This is the okay, ore. Okay, fantastic. Treat that with the acid in order to dissolve the rares. We raise the pH to uh, precipitate iron, so you can see sort of an orangey staining on that. That's the, the residue after the iron comes out. That's the waste product. Very nice uh, product to send off to the uh, dry stackable tailings. And then we precipitate our rare earths as a mixed rare earth carbonate. This is about 35% combined rare earths. So all the magnet materials are in there, lanthanum, cerium, and so on. All the heavy uh, rare earth elements are there, but in combination. We then dissolve that up, purify the zinc. This is actually a 61% zinc material that comes out as a zinc sulfide that we can sell as a byproduct. Instead of as a waste, we sell it. And then we make a rare earth oxalate, this very nice white powder, which is now uh, very highly purified, very low in radioactive elements and so on. And then we calcine that. We heat it up to around 600 degrees Celsius and make a mixed rare earth oxide, which now goes off to the refinery. So this material is about 98 or 99 percent rare earth oxides, very low levels of impurities, an ideal product to go into the rare earth processing pipeline to make the final products. And of course, for all of you out there at Investor Intel, David Dreisinger will be the kind of panelist we have uh, discussing 
technological extraction processes for the technology metals on May 15th and 16th. David, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you very much, Tracy. Thank you.